Okay, I think I think we've do, we've done the discussion on the the Patriots game. Let's talk about some of the questions that you guys have sent in. Again, I'll, I'll repeat. You know, if anybody has any questions you want us to talk about or any takes you want us to analyze, players that you want us to look at, put it in those YouTube community sections. I put out those posts um, typically the day that I make them. Also, I put up a post. This is just kind of interesting that I, I wanted to kind of look at. Was I will try and do this every week and saying who was the MVP of the Ravens um, in in their previous game. Lamar Jackson this last week won with a 93% um, vote. <laughs> so shout out to Lamar. He was the MVP. But um, I'm going to try and do that every week. So shout out to everybody that does that. Um, but then also, I'm also going to put out the, you know, hey, we're recording our podcast. What are some topics and takes we should cover? Um, and we'll talk about those in kind of this middle segment because I think it's, it's really good to hear what you guys want to hear about. Um, and we're able to talk about it. But let's let's get into it. Shout out to you. I see Yolanda's is at the top right here. Yolanda says... Should we be concerned about Adafe Owe? Who, who, who wants to start first? I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first. Listen, was this the second year? Yeah. Yo. You know how many steps? You know how many steps he took uh, this past week? I, I think it was probably a lot because we didn't have Listen, any edge rushers. Wakanda was one hundred eighteen. Oh my gosh! One hundred and eighteen. The highest, the highest defensive end that takes that many snaps is Alex Highsmith. Alex Highsmith has a number of QB pressures, tackles, and I think, I think sacks. I think I he's agree. leading the league in sacks. I actually think I think he's got four and a half. Yeah, but he's with playing the, with the Steelers. <laughs> with one hundred and eighteen, and this is without TJ Watt now. This is without TJ Watt now. With one hundred and eighteen snaps. He's not getting that many QB pressures. He hasn't re has he recorded a snack a sack yet? No. Brian Co Brian Copeland, who got elevated from the practice squad, recorded a sack before Adafi away. Now I know he's a developmental player, but there's a reason they drafted this young man in the first round. They say actually they saw some potential. I see potential in in uh, Adafi away. I know he. Everybody talks about the athletic freak, uh, the the uh, the freak of nature he can be. We can see that. We can see him run down guys. But if you're not putting no technique with all that athleticism, then what are you doing on my field? But other than taking space right now. And then you know, and people have to realize he wasn't a big sack guy at Penn State. He wasn't. He was surrounded around a lot of talent. If anything, he caused a lot of disruption. So that means he's a solid number two guy. So we still are searching for a number one defensive end. Now, can David Ojabo be that man come when he comes in? Who knows? We don't know what type of David Ojabo we're going to get back because we don't even know if he's going to be in game uh, in NFL game uh, form by November. And, 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 and initially, David Ojabo was another number two type of guy. So if these guys, if if these two brothers, I'm gonna call them brothers because they they known each other since high school, teammates and everything, and now they find their ways to be in the NFL together, play together. You know, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful story for two brothers, you know, coming together. If they can find a way collectively to to work work things out and make and and create enough disruption and noise, by all means, I'm up for it. But if Adolfi cannot get it together. I see us getting going at the more polished defensive end, whether he's a 25, 26 year old vet, or we might have to go back in the draft because we do need to get younger at the outside linebacker anyway. We do. So, I mean, I know that, like, I, I get it. You know, people may crucify me for saying it, um, for being so worried and everything. But when you draft a guy in the first round, you he's supposed to be a special talent. Y'all saw something in him, and we haven't got it gotten it out of got it gotten it out of them yet, as of yet. But maybe even with Tyus Bowser get back, we might see a, a upgrade in this play. But right now, I am getting a little worried because you know, with this with all the focus being on him, he's still not making a statement. Micah Parsons. In the Dallas, in the Dallas defense, everybody knows the 
you got to guard Michael Parsons. But what Michael Parsons do? Michael Parsons, yes, he knows he's going to get guarded by maybe uh, one, two guys, maybe even chip block, chip block by a running back. But he still has a motor that is freakishly crazy, and he's not going to stop. What did we see? What did we see with the defensive end against uh, at, at, for the Patriots, uh, Mr. Wise Jr.? Motor crazy. It didn't matter if Patrick McCarry was in there, Daniel Falehi. It didn't even matter if J.K. Dobbins was in there to chip him. He closed the gap to sack Lamar three times. If you're going to be a defensive end, you got to do something spectacular because in the trenches, that's where the real fight is. If you're not fighting, if you ain't got that dog in you, especially on this Ravens defense where we got a lot of veteran guys on that front seven, I need this young guy to really step it up. I need him to step it up because right now he is the heart. He's the he's he's part of that heartbeat for that front seven. Believe it or not, he's that heartbeat, and we and it's a lot riding on this first round pick with a fifth year option too. <laughs> so the Ravens obviously drafted Adafi away, thirty uh, second overall. They got him from the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, actually, it may have been thirty first overall. Um, they got him from the Kansas City Chiefs in that Orlando Brown Jr. trade. And I'm going to say this. I, I'm not worried at all about Adafe because I don't have I don't have the expectations I think a lot of other people have for him, right? You know, when you draft edge rushers, you know, and you want that first-round production, you know, these are the top 10 guys, right? These are the, these are the you know, the, the Chase Youngs, the, uh, the Bosa brothers. You know, I, I felt like – I thought it was downright ridiculous – that Micah Parsons wasn't the first defensive player off the board when they took uh, they took the corner out of South Carolina, um, and I was like I was shocked. J.C. Horn, yeah, I was shocked. I was like, you didn't draft Micah Parsons. One, they didn't have a linebacker. Two, they could have had Micah Parsons next to um, their current edge rusher, who's who's very good. I don't know why I'm blanking on his name right now, um, but it's like okay, when you draft these guys like super high overall, they're gonna be really good. That draft class, it didn't have any any guarantee studs, right? It was like, okay, a lot of these guys, they're decent, right? You have the project guys, the the Gregory Rousseau's, the Adafes. You have the kind of, okay, these guys are pretty solid, the Jalen Phillips, the Quiddy Pays. But overall, it was like, okay, Gregory Rousseau, Adafe, these are the these are the development, right? And Gregory Rousseau, we see him this year, and he's balling out. It's like, wow, he's doing so well. Why isn't Adafe doing that? Well, Gregory Rousseau was playing with Vaughn Miller. <laughs> Gregory Rousseau also was getting to play with Ed Oliver prior to injury. So he was able to just sit there and he's able to just play. And he's that freaking nature and he, he's able to shift all over the field. And it's like, I'm sorry to the Buffalo Bills defense, or I'm sorry to Gregory Rousseau. I do not care about you. I am stopping Von Miller. Like, that is the biggest worry that I have. Gregory Rousseau is a great player uh, and he's able to get that production because Von Miller is so good. Adafe is going out there, especially right now. And he is the only uh, player on this defensive line when it comes to the passing situation. You know, if you're running the ball, you're watching out for Calais and Michael Pierce, and, you know, and Justin Matabike. But when you're like, okay, I'm dropping back into shotgun. I have five offensive linemen. Nobody else is help blocking. You're blocking Adafe first. And then you're going to say, let Calais beat me on the inside or Matabike beat me on the inside. Or whoever the heck they're going to throw opposite of Adafe, you know, last week it was Brandon Copeland, you know, in situations. Let them beat me. And unfortunately, um, Adafe is not beating these focuses um, of these quarterbacks. However, I, I feel like this is a situation, this is like Jon Snow, right? You know, spoiler alert, Game of Thrones. If you're watching Game of Thrones, and I, you know, click over the next minute and a half, okay? Whatever. <laughs> this is the spoiler alert. Don't, you know, don't watch this. Jon Snow, Battle of the Bastards, what did he do? He is standing out there in the middle of that field, um, and he has an entire army coming after him. And he is and he is bracing his sword. He is ready, right? He mm -hmm. is ready. The, I feel like that's Adafi right now trying to trying to be the edge rusher. He's like, he's the only guy. He's legitimately the only player. And he's waiting for those reinforcements. He is waiting for those reinforcements. If he can hold out long enough, if he can stand there with his sword long enough for us to get our Justin Houston's, our Jason Pierre Pauls, our Tyus Bowser's. Th these aren't superstars, but they're a lot better than Brandon Copeland. 
They're a lot better at rushing the passer than any other player the Ravens have on that roster. But the biggest guy is David Ojabo, right? Because David Ojabo, I talk about, you know, this, you know, Adafi Owe's class was not the best for edge rushers. Yeah. This last class was a great class for edge rushers, right? You know, there were so many guys. It was Aiden Hutchinson, Walker, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau. Right now you look at it, Aiden Hutchinson, he's got three sacks um, on the year. Uh, you know, we've got we've got a lot of players. They were able to get some of these sacks. But Jermaine Johnson. <laughs> Jermaine Johnson. But we got a guy named David Ojabo. David Ojabo was supposed to go around 10. You know, and, and people were like, maybe he maybe the Ravens trade up for him. Maybe he slides a couple of picks to the Ravens. David Ojabo was a guy where it was like, no, he's going to come in. He's going to be very good. He's He was the guy where it was like, okay, he's going to have this instant tech kind of impact. Not to maybe the level of Aiden Hutchinson, but it was like, okay, this is a this is a top 10 pick right here. Like, this is a guy that's going to come in and play. Edge rusher is very difficult to come in and be able to be, hey, wow, we can throw him out there and he can get consistent sacks. Mm-hmm. David Ojabo was looked at as a player where that could happen. And it may take a little bit for him to, you know, get readjusted to playing football. But when he gets back and when he gets healthy, I fully expect him to be the number one uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. I think he's the number one over Adafe. When they're looking at three years in the future, who's the number one pass rusher on this team? I'm I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to say this. I'm thinking it's going to be a Justin Houston type of situation. But Justin Houston led the league in sacks. He was playing with a guy named Tamba Ali. And that was a dynamic duo of two elite guys, right? And they were able to go out there and it was like, yeah, Justin Houston getting the sacks. You double Justin Houston, you got Tamba Ali. Adafe is the Tamba Ali. He's going to be, you know, I'm not comparing play styles. I'm just comparing the, the situations. Yeah. I think I think David Ojabo is going to try and be our, our Justin Houston, our lead pass rusher. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with Adafe away taking a little bit of time to develop because that's the history of the Ravens, right? Most of the Ravens, Edge rusher they draft. You look at Judon. You look at Z- Zadarius White. You know these are the best edge rushers they've drafted. We didn't we didn't know who these guys were until year four. The problem is, or the benefit was, they were sitting behind guys that were really good, um, and so they were able to take time and develop because the Ravens can develop edge rushers. They just always had guys that they were sitting behind, so we didn't know them. Because could you imagine if we were playing like rookie Zadarius Smith? I um, mean, I know Zadarius Smith his rookie year actually he has like legitimately the greatest Madden ultimate team card of all time, which is hilarious. Um, they came was, out with this. He was a stunt magician. Oh yeah. yeah. And so he, he was able to come in, but it's like, okay, if we were throwing him out there, every play, everyone would have given up on him. Everybody would have given up on Matthew Judon. But with Zedary Smith or with Judon, we had Zedary Smith and Judon was behind him with, um, with uh, Judon. Or with Zedari Smith, it was like, yo, we got we got this dude named Terrell Suggs. You don't need to be that guy. Because we had Terrell Suggs, you know, getting those sacks. It's going to take a little bit of time, but all of a sudden, I, I feel like Adafi is just the guy, you know, he's got his heels in the ground, and he's like, hey, if I can just keep up, you know, this defensive line and be the, the front man long enough, I'm going to get those reinforcements. And those reinforcements are going to be, you know, John Snow, again, spoilers, Justin was standing there with no 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 horse. John Snow is just standing there. Everyone else has horses. Then he get that those reinforcements. They're all on horseback, he, and they have those extra things. And it's like, yes, we understand him as an individual, because last year, Adafi wasn't the number one, and he was able to come off the edge and he had those games where it's like, okay, they were focusing on Justin Houston, they were focusing on Calais, they were focusing on Tyus Bowser. Adafi at the beginning of the year, he had that Chiefs game. He's able to make those big plays because he's not the focus. They don't think about him. Right now, he's the only guy they think about. So I'm not ex- – like, I maybe I'm just different from a lot of people. I'm not expecting a lot out of Adafi this year. It's the it's the in two years type of thing. He's an edge rusher where it was like, hey, this guy in a long period of time, in the long game is going to be very good. But if he's in a situation like Gregory Rousseau where he is sitting, you know, oh, he's playing opposite Von Miller, and you have a freak athlete like one of those two, they're going to be able to do some damage. Adafi right now, he's just waiting. He's just biding his time because when – think about this. Justin Houston comes back. JPP comes back at the end of the year. They also have David Ojabo. Guys are going to be like, we don't need to worry about Adafi. Doesn't really have any sacks this year. You know, he's been kind of struggling. Leave him one-on-one. Joe Burrow, 
We're leaving him one on one. I'm sorry. We're, we got to worry about the other guys. And he's going to say he's going to come up right up that middle. And he's going to he's going to drop Joe Burrow because they're like we didn't have to care about him. That's my thoughts on on his you know kind of role with this team. But you know who Adafi was reminding me of, reminding me of on our team right now, last year. Who was who, who was that guy last year? Ooh, I mean that was kind of Justin Houston last year. No, 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 linebacker, linebacker. Oh, is that is that PQ? Yeah, yeah, he's reminding me of PQ. You know, it, 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 didn't, it didn't take till you know you got Josh Bonds out there, but I think we yeah. forgot another guy that really, really. It's going to uh, change the tempo of this defense once he gets back healthy, too, which is Tyus Bowser. Absolutely. Tyus Bowser is definitely the wild card of the uh, front seven as well because where Mike McDonald was trying to put uh, Adolphe, Tyus is more athletic to do the, the dropping back and coverage, getting getting his hands on the ball, you know, get, getting up the field and uh, getting the, getting the uh, quarterback. So, I mean, you know, by all means, you know, that was a great – Great, great argument. I definitely love that because uh, <laughs> Terrell Suggs, when you had Terrell Suggs, you had Jared Johnson. When you had Terrell Suggs, you had Paul Kruger. When you had Terrell Suggs, you had Zodarius Smith. When you had Terrell Doom. Suggs, you had Doom. And Doom was on the back end of his career. You know? So, <laughs> it's just, you know, we. I think we are I think I, I know some of the Ravens fans are definitely um, looking at looking at Adafi as like you know that number one guy. Um, like I said, man, I definitely feel like he could. He's a he's a number one guy in, in regards of causing disruption, but he will be a number two solid guy. You know, in regards of you know um, being being a, being a sack leader, I feel like they could be another. I feel like when David Ojabo will come back, it can be another. Let me take a step further. I'm gonna say Michael Strahan and Justin Tuck. I like that. I like that. You know, trying to build up that that dynamic pass rush duo. A lot of times it may take a little bit of time. You know, a lot of these, oh, they're the best. You know, they come in and they're dominant. It's like, yeah, that happens sometimes. But also there's other players where it's like, oh, they developed into it, right? Cooper Cup was not known. I mean, I loved Cooper Cup. I, I watched Cooper Cup at Eastern Washington. I loved him in the draft. Yeah. I actually wanted the Ravens to draft Cooper Cup, but we didn't. Um, but, like, he wasn't the best wide – you know, he wasn't one of the top five wide receivers. He wasn't one of the top ten wide receivers. Until when? Again, Matthew Stafford. Right? Until he gets that help. Until he's no longer Jared Goff. Right? And he's, he's able to all of a sudden – people go, oh, wow, this guy's crazy good because people didn't want to watch Jared Goff throw to him. Yeah. So – Sometimes you just need that right combination of people and you need that time, right? Cooper Cup, you know, he's like 29 years old, which is crazy, or 28 years old. He is old compared to all of these other – because it seems like a lot of people just don't know about Cooper Cup and they're like, oh, Cooper Cup, he's so young, right? Because, you know, the Jamar Chases, the Justin Jeffersons, they come in and they dominate. Cooper Cup took some time, you know, to get to that level. Not everyone can be a Jamar Chase in that rookie season, right? Not everyone can be a Justin Jefferson as a rookie especially at the edge rusher position when you draft a project like Adafi away. Uh, yeah. Like he's, he's playing to the level, especially, you know, last year I think he played above expectations. And this year I think he's playing to about to my expectations where it's like, hey, he's going to chase quarterbacks down when he, they get outside the pocket. But one-on-one -on -one situations, he doesn't have that, that repertoire. So I'm not worried about him. You know, I'm worried about the overall Ravens pass rush over the next, you know, four weeks until we get everybody back. Uh, but I'm not overly worried about him. But 